The Coffee Talk series is a series of visual novel indie games developed by Toge Productions. These games interested me as I was looking for new games to play, shout out to Xbox Game Pass. I wanted to get something a little different from my usual norm, and the great sprite work and interesting trailer was enough to get me to play the first game. I've got some thoughts about it because I've ended up getting so much more. The first Coffee Talk game is set in an alternate version of Seattle, Washington. It's not just humans who roam this world, but also orcs, sea creatures, elves, succubi, werewolves, vampires, cats, dogs, and aliens. Despite this fantastically diverse mix of races, the setting of Coffee Talk doesn't have any visual cues that would suggest that the world is some mix of fantasy or sci-fi. The world looks a lot like ours, which I thought was an interesting choice. They don't have any unique names for certain countries, states, and cities. For example, Korea is Korea, New York City is New York City, you get the point. I honestly really love that the world isn't so different from ours. It's something that they make a point of highlighting but never outright stating throughout the entire story. The story of Coffee Talk is about a barista who owns a coffee shop of the same name. Over the course of 14 days, many different people visit the shop, whether it be to vent their problems or simply find solace within its cozy walls. There are 11 different characters who visit the shop in various combinations in these 14 days. Bria, an aspiring human writer, Lua, a succubus in an interracial relationship with an elf named Baileys, Georgie, a police officer, a werewolf hospital worker named Gala, Hyde, a vegan vampire model, a Neko Mimi music artist named Rachel, and her father Hendry who also has history in the business, an aquatic sea creature named Aqua, a half-orc game developer named Myrtle, and Neil. Hi Neil. These 11 characters all visit the shop, bringing with them a myriad of problems and stories about the happenings of their lives. From racism and the societal as well as economic pressures it brings, to working in the video game and entertainment industries, and sex work, nearly any topic that comes up whether you're scrolling through social media or observing the news, it's covered in some way in this game. I think that's impressive considering I blazed through this game in about 5 hours and was a little sad by the time it was over because I got enough but still wanted more. What contributes to the pacing of this game is the writing. Every character speaks in a candid manner, another aspect of the world that I thought was interesting. Almost nothing is left up for interpretation. Things are spelled out clearly and handled clearly. For example, the storyline between Baileys and Lua revolves around family and racism. Both partners' families can't stand the race of the other, but while that is the case, Lua is still more attached to her family because of their love, while Bailey is ready to abandon his own due to a series of previous conflicts. An argument about family ties causes them to separate for a few days and they come to the copy shop, gaining advice from other characters such as Gala and Hyde. Hyde tells Lua the answer is obvious, while Gala warns Baileys about the economic and societal challenges he and Lua will face if they decide to abandon their families and live together. Baileys and Lua meet up one more time. Due to the elf's resolute love and gaining some perspective from Gala, Baileys accepts the previously mentioned challenges and plans to properly ingratiate himself with Lua's family, leading to the two reuniting in a wonderful emotional scene that kinda serves as the apex of the story. There's a bit more meat to the story if you play the game, but that's mostly how it goes. I love this. I really do. It's so refreshing to watch a storyline play out and have everything be so defined. This is even seen in many stories such as when Freya and Gala tell Hyde he was being a dick to Lua about her situation. Hyde doesn't budge on his stance, but later in the story we see both Freya and Gala offer straight up advice to Rachel and Baileys respectively, doing so from a place of genuine but firm care. The main crux of the storyline was to demonstrate that you can tell someone the truth and still effectively get your point across without being mean or flippant about the situation, especially if you lack the proper context. Inside this story's great writing, there's also a well handled balance between emotional storylines and moments of brevity and laughter. Georgie ended up being my favorite character. His dynamic with Freya made me laugh a few times and his fatherly experience lends itself to mending the relationship between Rachel and Henry. Georgie is very much the glue of the group. His ability to help connect and relate to everyone in the story was the best part of the whole experience in my opinion. I don't have much to say about Aqua and Myrtle. Their situation is the most pragmatic of all the characters and coupled with a budding relationship of some sort, the two also serve as a nice come down from the emotional weight carried by Lua, Baileys, Hendry, and Rachel. I cannot overstate how much I love how candid the writing in this game is. 
As a Sonic fan, I'm used to there being subtext underneath the story's writings, especially in the early games. I don't play whatever is the new hot 100 hour single player experience nowadays, but I imagine those games have tons of subtext in their writing as well. Hell, I'm sure there's a bunch of indie games with that stuff as well. My overall point is that I love that nothing that is set up over the course of this game's story is left unresolved or left up for interpretation. Don't get me wrong, I love picking apart details and stories and coming up with headcanons, but it's nice to have a game be so self-contained despite having a world that makes you wish you could explore it. There is only one storyline that is hidden beneath the surface, but if you're paying attention, you'll know what's going on by day 5. Even if you don't, the hidden ending spells it out for you as plain as day. What's the secret ending you may ask? Well, you gotta play the game to get there. The gameplay of Coffee Talk is incredibly simple. You advance dialogue with the click of a button, but there's also an auto mode, a welcome addition as clicking after every piece of dialogue gets pretty tedious. The main part of gameplay comes in serving drinks. Whenever a customer requests a drink, you simply click the three necessary items needed to brew said drink and serve it to the customer. Unsure of how to make certain drinks? It's available on your phone. Your phone also allows you to track progress with other characters. Once added to your friends list, their bios become more detailed the more you brew several drinks for them successfully in a row. Be careful though, remember when I said this game was easy? It is, but you have to remember and take note of certain clues given to the player about certain drinks. Gala needs a specific drink for his shapeshifting problem, and if you don't brew him the correct drink, you get whatever his bad ending is. Brew the correct drink however, you're good to go. Not every drink is available right off the bat in your phone, and sometimes characters will not explicitly state what they want, so it's important that you experiment with ingredients and remember what you give to the same customers. Serving the right drinks for everybody also guarantees the best ending in the game. You only get about 5 chances to remake a drink each day, so be careful. The days aren't long, but you may find yourself stuck on a drink or two. The music is lovely, a nice lo-fi soundtrack that adds to the down-to-earth atmosphere of the game. Andrew Jeremy is the person behind these wonderful sounds, and some of my favorites include Come Closer, One More Time, and The Last Time. I had a fun time with Coffee Talk Episode 1, a very immersive game with great visuals, music, and gameplay that helps keep the flow of the story going without breaking its pace. The game is currently available on Game Pass at the time this video goes up. It's also available on Steam and it's worth every penny. A great way to pass the time. Give this one a shot. I can't wait to see what they have in store for episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly. Coffee Talk Episode 2, Red and Blue, is set in the same place, but it's been 3 years since episode 1. Since not much has changed graphically aside from minor visual updates to the coffee shop as well as some cosmetic changes for a few returning characters, I don't have much to say about the visuals of this game. They look great still. That might be a running theme for this part of the review. The premise of episode 2, Red and Blue, is the same as episode 1. You're a barista running their cozy little nighttime coffee shop hosting a list of unique characters all with their own things going on in life. Every character from episode 1 returns here, but some are further along in life than others. Lua and Baileys are about to get married. Neil is now known as Silver after becoming more involved in human experiences, and Rachel is preparing to release her new single. Meanwhile, characters like Gala, Aqua, and Myrtle are still doing the same things they were doing three years ago. Some new characters come by to the shop, a banshee named Riona who wants to get into music and content creation, Lucas, a social media influencer, and an alien sibling of Silver known as Amanda. Also there's this adorable little cat that pops up every now and again. I don't have much positives to say about the meat of this story. Nothing overly negative, but I don't know, something about everyone's stories failed to connect the same way they did in episode 1 for me. Things felt more disconnected here and while different people in different storylines do offer their thoughts and solutions, there wasn't this connecting thread between them all. The thing that connected every story in episode 1 was Georgie and Freya, but now Georgie has been given his own storyline and Freya shows up right at the very end of the game, so there's no central character aside from the barista themselves. It threw me off how disconnected stories were in episode 2, but I can appreciate the attempt to keep storylines in their own lane for the most part. The central theme of this story is about people trying to get by, or trying something new after all. 
Aqua and Myrtle barely interacted with anybody else this time around, which kind of surprised me, but I should have expected it. Like I said in the episode 1 review, their story is the most pragmatic out of everybody's, so their conflict was put to the side in a nice little message about communication between partners. Gala and Hyde serve damn near the same purpose they did in episode 1. They have their own things going on, but they're around to offer advice to the others. Hyde has gotten better with his delivery of advice, still blunt and dismissive at times, but he isn't rude about it. A nice little piece of character development from episode 1. As for the new characters, I liked them but didn't love them. Lucas' backstory in the field of content creation was interesting, and him wanting to differentiate his content resonated with me. Rihanna's disposition to putting out some content because of how mean people online can be was also relatable, and her story to overcome that as well as accept some help on her way up was good to see. I just didn't care for a lot of the in-betweens. There was more fluff in this story compared to episode 1. I thought that I would have loved the inclusion of more world lore in this story, but I felt myself growing tired of reading through that stuff whenever it was brought up. It made me realize that I didn't want to know too much about the makeup of their world, but how the characters move through that world. That's why the most enjoyment I got out of this game came in simple interactions between Rachel, Riona, and Lucas. Rachel taking on the role Freya was to her as a woman with experience offering it to someone who needed it. Silver dedicating himself to creating a safe space for extraterrestrial beings who face prosecution from the government was also a highlight for me. It showed how far along he was from his days as Neil. The final few days were the best part of the game for me. Bailey and Lua's after wedding party playing out briefly in the coffee shop made me think a lot about episode 1. I only played that game earlier this week and felt really nostalgic seeing Gala, Hyde, and the newly wedded couple on their way to doing new things with their lives. The one on one with Freya and Georgie was excellent. Freya's heartbreaking announcement that she was going to start traveling really signaled to me how much life for these characters had changed. I was sad but also happy for her and was glad she came around one last time to bookend this story. I must sound like a broken record at this point, but there isn't much to say about the gameplay. It's exactly like episode 1. The only real changes are the cosmetics to the brewing system. You also have new ingredients, hibiscus and butterfly, which is where my Pokemon Red and Blue joke came from because… come on. Visually, this is the best stuff in the game in my opinion. The other changes came in Tomocho that now uses colored emojis to signal how satisfied your friends are with drinks you serve them, which pushes them towards their best endings. You can now also like posts they put up on the app, which can indicate what's going to happen in the story. You're also given items throughout the game that you must give to certain characters as you serve them their drinks. This also pushes certain characters towards their best endings if you give them these items on time. You can get achievements for forgetting to give the items and I thought that was pretty funny. Even when Georgie just told me not to forget his lighter, I forgot it anyway and didn't react until the achievement popped up. I like the sense of humor of these developers. I also forgot to mention that you can make latte art if milk is added to the drink just like in episode 1. I'm horrible at this, but it's a cool feature. The music is once again stellar. Andrew Jeremy, kudos to you sir. This music makes the vibes feel so complete and I couldn't get enough of the new song Rachel made with the in-game version of Andrew. It's excellent and I recommend that people go out of their way to listen to this music. I didn't have as much fun with episode 2 compared to episode 1 of Coffee Talk, but the overall experience of both games were good. I don't usually play visual novels, but I'm trying to expand my gaming bag, so Coffee Talk was a pleasant surprise for me. Seek these games out, they're well worth your time, especially if you're in a chill mood looking for a good time kill. Have any thoughts about Coffee Talk? Please share them in the comments. I'd like to talk to people about these games. Shout out to you guys for watching. Check out my other videos while you're here and stick around. With that, I'm gone. Peace.